And here we go. What's up, babies? Here it is, Thursday again, 8 o'clock, pretty much on the dot. We're back again, bringing to you coffee and cigars live, live in the studio. Now we're in the kitchen studio. What do you yeah. think about the kitchen studio there, Al? Kitchen's nice. I, I like the kitchen. We've got some some other lights going on. So it's nice. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thanks. What's up, Rusty? How you doing out there? Good to see you out there again. Hey, Rusty, Thunderdome. The Thunderdome. So Rusty was called, texted me earlier this week, uh, the other day, and he's like, hey, man, I might be coming down your way in November. Yeah. And I was, I was, and I was like, awesome, awesome, awesome. Maybe you have time to come on the show, join us here. But I was thinking, okay, as I was setting this up, maybe we can do some cooking a la Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I got to say, have you ever seen like lamb a- sauce? Lamb sauce. No, I, no. I like his carbonara. And watching it, the reaction videos of people just tearing his carbonara apart. Why is it bad? He just starts. He's, he uses bacon. They're like, no, no, no. One chale. <laughs> you have to use one chale. And then he's like, we're just gonna put some peas in it. He goes, ah, no. Peas? Oh, peas. Mama mia. Really? And he's like putting all this stuff in it. Like, no, no, no. This is uh, pasta, but it it is not carbonara. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that, that, that's terrible. Uh, was, I, you know, I saw funny. people. I saw like the the pic, the thumbnails of of YouTube videos. Of what, it looks like people are reacting. I, I, didn't, I never watched it. Either. Yeah, no, like, it's pretty funny. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible, man. That's terrible. Actually, actually, this is a this is a tagliere. Oh yeah, you the were one for about the that. pasta yep. that I'm, I'm trying to make. So this is finished. I finished it all finally, but I still need the mozzarella. Okay. So that's that's still the big conundrum at the moment. Right. If Marco can get it, that'd be great. If not, then we'll figure something else out. Yeah, I saw some people are making some on Etsy. But, um, oh yeah. 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 Were they big? No, like thirty. Yeah, thirty-two inches, thirty-six inches. Oh. Yeah. Expensive. Uh, they they were about hundred bucks, maybe eighty-nine. See, bucks. here's the thing. So, like, if I go to the, I found this place that sells. Wooden dowels, yeah. two inches in diameter, and in a variety of materials. You could get like pine or uh, what maple. You could get walnut. Yeah, I think walnut was the more expensive one. And they range in between twenty six to fifty two dollars. So it's like, right. and, I mean, they're just dowels. You still have to cut it, and if you want to have like the, the finished ends, you have to finish the ends. You still have to do all that, but I mean, like, man, for a hundred some bucks. Well, but there's two things. A, yes, you're, you're. Somebody's got to have the equipment, the lathe, that is that long. And those lathes are expensive when they get to that length. Being able to turn something that's, you know. But do you need to turn inches. it? Or can't you just like, you know, carve and work? It? You're turning it. Yeah, you're turning it. Plus, why? Yeah. It's only two inches thick. It's only two inches, but you got to turn that outside, and you got to make sure that if you remember the that thing is like. Stupid accurate. As yeah, but I'm saying like, like if you look at if you look at Evan Funky's, uh-huh. right, he has his mozzarella, and basically on the one end it's just rounded. Yes. And on the other end he's got like a ball. Yes. But it's it's not necessarily the finish on those two. I, I don't think is integral to the, the technique. Of not pasta. necessarily, but over the entire length of that, uh-huh. the tolerance and how flat that is. Like that dowel you have is good, but it's rough. It's gonna. It might have some irregularities. The one that, that they have once it's been turned, I see. Man, what you're now it's. I see. What you're saying. I see. It's straight. So you, you have the guy's got to have the equipment. Plus, he's got to have the skill and ability to to do that so that it is completely. Okay, see, see, see. Flat. You're. I'm presuming. So the the difference in the equation is that I'm presuming that the the sourced dowel. Will be smooth enough that will not need turning over the entire length. I mean, you, you're probably right. You're probably, it, I, mean, I never thought of it that way, but yeah, you could it probably, probably work. Right. Yes, but is it that next level? Mm. Yeah, okay. maybe not. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe you have a point. That's a good point. That's a good point. All right. So speaking of good points, we've got coffee. We're going to be drinking coffee. Back to the Esteli. This is the cigar blend coffee, and we're going to make that in the. The Chemex. All right, all right. So we're making two cups, and we're going to be making it 
Very simply, very simply. You know, there's so many people in the coffee business and they're very much like, we must do this meticulousness and God knows. I don't think that's didn't wash your filter. That's not Oh, you know, do you know why? Yes, I do. But okay. I, since you put out that video, I got to be honest with you, I haven't washed my filters either. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> at the shop. So so if you haven't, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. So on this chat, it's, it's on this channel. Uh, I've released this video about coffee filters. And we're tasting co the different coffee filters that are on the market and seeing if, they're, if there's any kind of flavor. Well, the white filters... But by and large, have no tainted flavors on it. So because of that, that whole test, even at the shop, I've stopped rinsing the filters for the most part. I did notice one thing. Yes. And, and as we grew it, I'm, I'm almost positive it's going to happen in this case too. So I'm going to hold off until we actually brew the coffee, and I'll point out what I've noticed. Or maybe if you point it out now... That will show your like expertise. No, I'm not that. Expert. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I, I will tell you. All right, as you're doing I'm going to start brewing. Okay, I'm going to start. So doing. it really shows up actually on the bloom. That filter, if I do a rinse, you don't see the coffee staining the filter. Like right now, you can start to see that coffee filter start to pull back up, and you start to see it start to stain. Oh, you mean if, if you if you pre wet it, it doesn't stain. Like right, right, right. I get that. Do you think that's a negative thing, though? Not necessarily, because to be honest with you, I haven't been able to really pull out a difference. What do you say? As far as overall flavor. Yes. So, I would say it's, it's not. It's just different. And sometimes when you do wet that filter, and then you try to dump it out, and the filter falls off in your hand when you're trying to rinse it out, and trying to get it set back in there, right? You just never quite get that filter set. Oh, yes, yes. I have, Especially with the Chemex. These Chemexes are, are harder to reset perfectly. But, you know, sometimes, you know, because they're dry filters, right? Like what I found is that sometimes I will still wet them, but only just to get them to stay down and to control them better instead of blowing away. Like if we have a crosswind blowing through the shop. And especially like right now, since the weather's been relatively mild, um, it's been a nice time to leave the doors open and let the air flow through. It is nice. Yeah, it is really nice. Yes, sir. So, talking to some customers down in Texas. And, like, yeah, it's 80 degrees down here. It's like, buddy, the high is like 65. Wow. <laughs> 80 degrees. That's crazy. Well, they were having, what, 130 degree temperatures in, in the West Coast earlier this oh, week? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, I, all I know is last week it was more, much more prevalent. But when I was going into work in the morning. It was, it was hazy, man. You like over oh. the sun. The sun had a distinctive haze over the sun. But this morning, no. Last week was more prevalent than oh, last week uh -huh. than this. But there was a, uh, it was noticeable. Yeah, actually, this morning when I was getting up, I was going to work. Like, I don't, and I don't know if this is this is probably not related to that because it's been so long. But there was kind of a burnt smell, like someone's house had burnt down the night before. Could I, I don't know if anyone did. It's I probably the spice factor. No, no, the spice. There's a very <laughs> different flavor. Very different. There's a actually the spice factory. There's something because those who may not be familiar, where the, like here where the roastery is, where we're actually shooting this live stream from, we're in this place called Hunt Valley, and Hunt Valley is the headquarters of McCormick worldwide. So the factories of McCormick are all here. So there's this one, there's, I was telling like some of the, the, the scientists from McCormick this, I said, there's this one thing that this, that the, that the spice mill will run every like several months. And I just get that like, that kind of like gag reaction, whatever. I still don't know what it is. Like I'm trying to, I, hope, I want to get to one time be like, hey man, the next time it happens, I want to call them and be like, hey, what are they running right now? <laughs> Tell me what it is. I'm just, I just want to know. I mean, for years I've experienced this. When, it's, when it gets colder, mm -hmm. it's funny because now when I'm driving to work, as the temperatures drop, the air's a little bit thicker, I can really start to smell it more now than 
Mm-hmm. Which one? Just in general. Oh, like okay. when I'm coming up, up the roundabout way and I pass the top side, I can smell the spices being ground. More Wait, on the beltway? I can smell from the beltway. Oh, yeah. From the beltway? Oh, yeah. The beltway's like five miles from here. No, I, yeah, you know, I can smell from really? the beltway. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. I never even thought about that. Yeah. But in the wintertime, in summertime, I really couldn't smell it. But in the winter, the air cools down. It's a little bit thicker. I can it carries, and I can smell it in the air. Wow, that's fascinating. And then, you know, I never even thought about that. That could do that. Yeah, it's cool. Smelly old bay as you're driving up that way. Nice. That's right. All more. All more. All right. So here we are. So this coffee now is a blend of Tanzanian and uh, Honduran coffees. Sir. You, sir. All right, very good, very good. Enjoy. Cheers. Still a bit on the hot side. What are you getting out of that? You know, one of my favorite things about this blend mm-hmm. is actually the nose. Like how it smells as it's coming off. I mean, it's got a really nice, you know, almost like that, almost like that dark chocolate. Oh, yes. Ish. And kind of spice, but. And I'll be honest with you, I, I do like my coffee to kind of cool down a good bit. Oh, for sure. For sure. Agreed. Agreed. So. Agreed. All right. Let's not take too long. We're going to move into it. Yeah. Time for the cigar. Now we have this coffee. Now we have the cigar. And again, we got the coffee, uh, the cigar from Tobacco Leaf and Jessup. And uh, I've actually got a schedule coming out of the next four weeks after this of cigars that I, I got, again, was out, I was down at Raul's place in Jessup last weekend. Mm-hmm. Getting uh, getting the cigars. Here we are. Thanks. So sir. this time we've got the Stolen Thrones Crook of the Crown. No, yeah, yeah, Crook of the Crown Robusto. This is a what five by fifty cigar, Robusto shape, Maduro wrapper. What what is it? It's a it's a it's a San Andreas wrapper that, according to them, has been aged for ten years. But they've only been around for like a year, right? Just about a year. It's just like one of those things where, like, the, the, the liquor companies will come out, the brand new like whiskey company will come out, and like, we got thirty year whiskey. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like MGP. You know, that it's they're utilizing and working with a factory based down in uh, Nicaragua that has these tobaccos available for them. So they pick and choose the, the tobaccos from their library, and this one is that. Now, you know, I've never noticed about this about this cigar. Look at the foot. It's like a semi-closed foot, right? So that it wraps around it, and you have just that central opening. Well, let me tell us it. Can we see it? I can't see it. I don't think we see it. See? Yours is, yours is more open than mine. Oh, yours is almost mine is closed. Almost really closed. So here, this is... Can you see that? No, no. Kind of. You can kind of see it that way. Sorry, the lighting's not as bright as it, as it could be to, to get that detail. I'm trying to get this whole, like, you know, mood lighting. All right. So it's a little bit, it is open, but mine is a little bit closed. So I'm actually going to. So wait, is it supposed to be partially closed? Looks like it's supposed to be mostly closed. So mine, I mean, you know, that, that closed foot gets delicate. So, you know, it just can be a consideration. But. I'm not going to char light it. I'm going to light it straight up. There's an interesting aroma to this. Like, kind of, kind of like sweet manure. Yeah. But a spicy old bay sweet manure. Right. 
Like there's a real definite spiciness to it. Like a, what's the spice? What are the spices? In, what's the red spice in Obey? Paprika? Mostly paprika. So paprika yeah. and like black pepper. Paprika, cayenne, black pepper. That's, but, that's exactly it. Paprika, cayenne, and black pepper. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. Now, do you think that just comes from the wrapper? You know, it's funny. San Andreas wrapper really has been hitting off. A lot of people, a lot of people use the San Andreas wrapper. And it, it's funny that it's called San Andreas, and it's not just called a Mexican Maduro wrapper. That's, I mean, that's but I mean, San Andreas has been around for a long. I don't remember it being this pungent. Like it's a pungent. Like a, it's like a. It's like a, for me, it's like it's. I'm saying pungent, but it's not necessarily. It's like a it has scintillating a pungent. Yeah, it's got a real sweet. It's like one that I just kind of want to smell. You know what? It, it's kind of like it's kind of like if you smell a, a spicy um, 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 Maryland crab soup. Okay. With the lima beans, but then the, like that beef beef broth that's been yeah, done God. like what sat twenty four hours, you know, kind of ruined that, you know. Yeah, yeah, this is craziness. It's I it don't smell like before. It, it don't smell like Mexico. Good. It doesn't smell like Mexico. <laughs> so ten year old Maduro wrapper from Mexico, mm -hmm. and then it, it's a binder. It's from Indonesia. With uh, Indonesian and Nicaraguan fillings, so right, let's let's get into the cutting. This was, I mean, this is the very this first is... cigar that they produced. Oh, it's the the one we smoked a couple weeks ago. That was the one that was the new one. Yes, this is the this is what they debuted their brand. With. Um, I thought this was okay. Okay, it's got a real it's got a real sweetness. But not a brulee sweetness. No. But it's got a sweetness to it. Chuck says he loves the San Andreas wrapper. Oh, absolutely. I mean, some, one, some of my favorite cigars in the end of the is San Andreas wrapper. Does it really? I'm almost positive it does. I could be wrong. But there's a lot. I mean, I mean you're probably right. I, I'm, I'm just, uh, hey. I'm just all about the the Ana Paraca wrapper. Uh, okay. A one note kind of guy sometimes. And like I said, I'm not going to chart. I'm just going to straight away. Okay, so you're saying you're just straight, why, 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 why are, you, why are you making that distinction? Because when you have that closed foot. Depending upon who you talk to, they say that you shouldn't really torch it, that you know, toast it first. That when you straight light it, that it kind of adheres to that, that front face, and you get a little bit more from that. Okay. I'm going to try. With this G4000 jetline, which could burn my face off at this rate. Right. And that's the only... Yeah. Good thing I don't put product in my hair. Be on fire by now. Don't need a hair. I just got a haircut yesterday, actually. Yeah. Well, it's actually also how I keep the mustache curtains, you know? <laughs> So George is having the Romeo San Andreas. Oh, have you ever had that cigar? I have not. Yeah, I don't think I've had that one. How was that smoking there, George? Yeah, so this was really, like you said, it was released May 2019, it says. And it's made by a place called Aromas de Jalapa. Yeah, which is, I think is interesting because I don't, I had never really heard that there are factories in Jalapa. Like, so if, if this is if this is Nicaragua, right? If this is if this is if this is Nicaragua, you know, if Nicaragua, like you fly into what is it? Into Manawa. Let's say Manawa is here, right? 
that's actually more like this. This is the ocean of Manawa. And then you drive to Matagalpa, Esteli, and then, oh, it's maybe this way, whatever. But Jalapa is more north of Esteli, closer towards Honduras. So you got a long drive. It's yeah, it's, I think it's another, from Esteli, I think it's another hour. But I, I know that they grow tobacco there. I just didn't know they had factories there. Right? That was just, I was, when I saw that on the, on the, on the internet, I was like, surprised to see that. Now, George is saying it's fantastic. Oh, this is starting off. I know. It, it starts off. It's got a, it, there's no, like, getting into it slow. It's like. Yeah, it's. it's so like, I'm here, but it's still, they say it's a medium, medium plus. I don't know. I it's think starting it's off pretty bit, full. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it's definitely more meaningful kind of body. Oh, that's interesting. Still has that sweetness. On the on the, the palate? I still can pick up that sweetness from it. I'm getting more spice. There's a lot of spice. A lot there of spice. spice. I don't know. I can still... There's a good amount of smoke. Oh, yeah. So what are the rest of you guys smoking tonight or drinking? Let us know. Put them in the comments. We want to hear from you. There is a lot of space. A lot of space. A lot of space. Because you try to do that retro now, it just, it just hits you. It just it almost makes your eyes water. I still can't do that. I still can't. That's just not me. Well, you know, as long as you enjoy it, that's all that matters. And I am, I am. Exactly. I am. It's very nice. But it's it's definitely spicy. Yeah. It's definitely full body. For me, it's full body. I don't know if these guys are medium, but maybe it'll tone down the medium. But, but right now, here's your thing. You just started off your brand, and you, you man, you threw down the gauntlet. Yeah. Because yeah. what's the retail of this cigar? 1050. 1050. This cigar is every bit of 1050. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know, if I pay 1050 for it, I'm going to be happy with my purchase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. But you are limited in the sizes. It is at 5 by 50 or 6 by 50. Yeah, they only have this in the Toro and the Robusto. Uh, I would love to see a Corona. I would corona. love to see a Corona. Yeah, I think as long as the Corona doesn't die out in the middle of your, of your smoke. Like so that's that. the way Petit corona, corona from Rocky Patel. <laughs> okay? <laughs> <laughs> and this this does not... So far, the smoke is it's perfect. It's flat. It's not wavy like a Rocky. Sorry. Just, I'm not a big fan. Well, you know, that, like the one that I smoked last week, the, the World mm -hmm. Championship Marima from Rocky Patel, it started off really well, like really well, like to the point where I was like surprised how much I was enjoying it. Because like I said in last week's show, you know, it's like I have preconceived notions about Rocky Patel that are not positive, right. but I wanted to give it a try. And so, and especially with the World Championship Marima, I was like, all right, let's give it a try. And it was going really, it was going splendidly, to be honest. And then that hole came and just dropped the, and the whole thing just died. Like, what, 20, 30 minutes into it? Like, done. Incredibly disappointing. Incredibly. With all that spice, do you get any, like, graham crackers? No. At least not yet. Are you getting graham cracker? I got to see. I keep going. Right now, it's just, for me, it's just a lot of spice. Like spice, 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 black pepper. Maybe some of that cayenne. No, yeah, maybe some of the red pepper cayenne kind of thing, but it's just a lot of spice. But not, not that complexity of, like I was saying earlier, the old day Maryland, Maryland crab soup kind of spice. It's, it's not that. That was just on the aroma, the fragrance. But it, it's really quite... 
I gotta tell you though, Jay, mm. I do like the coffee with it. Yeah, let me fix that. Let me fix that. Oh yeah, it's got a nice complex. I mean, it's a nice companionship to it. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, really, where I talked about that chocolate on the nose before, like I don't know. I can, to me, maybe it's in the back of my head. I don't know, but I can taste that. It has that that cocoa kind of flavor to it. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Yeah, they threw down hard. Who are these guys? So these guys, you know, it started by two guys. Um, From Virginia, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The guys' names are J.R. Cannon and Lee Marsh. Um, They partnered with uh, Noel uh, Rojas. Rojas. So are these two guys like the the Mike Rosales, Skip Martin of, of, like, Virginia? I don't know if I – I don't know. I don't know the guys. I only I know they had their main business in that you know what they worked through is uh, I believe it's Atlantic something cigars based out of Virginia Beach. Okay. And I went on their website earlier today. Uh, Atlantic Dominion. Atlantic Dominion. Dominion. Yes. But Atlantic Dominion, they are actually a, a wholesaler, but they happen to have a cigar shop. They're cigar wholesaler. Well. Yes, no, they're more a wholesaler for like convenience stores. Oh, okay. And but they have a cigar shop. And these are sold through their cigar shops. And they actually do a good bit through their I think their Facebook is their main presence for the cigar brand. Yeah, they don't have a, a regular website. No, they don't. I mean they've only been out for a year. Um, now these must be guys that really like cigars because you know, if you think about someone that does convenience stores, you wouldn't think that they're gonna they're going to come right. up with something very benign, typically. Yeah, yeah. This is not benign. This no. is very much like no. an enthusiast cigar. So they did a podcast, and this is coming okay. from the simplystogies.com when we looked up there. And I don't know if it was their podcast or not, but they were talking about it, and they brought up this story about before they got into the industry. And they're hanging out with some industry guys, and it kind of came up, and they kind of said, hey, you know, we're kind of thinking about doing our own thing, coming out with our own cigar. And one of the industry guys told them there wasn't a seat at the table for them, which probably half fueled Were by they women at ICBR? I don't know. Half fueled by booze. They, they came back and said, well, we'll steal one. So when they were struggling trying to find a name for their cigar, you know, when that night came up and that, that's, that came up and that's where they got Stolen throne. Oh, okay, okay. So it's kind of it is kind of interesting. Um, oh, look, they, they said here that uh, let's see that Lee wanted to make a Corona, but Jr. squashed it, and so he said to Lee said to email Jr. and let him know you want a Corona. So if this does get back to him, I do want a Corona, and so do I now. There you go. So do I do a Corona. Just don't let it die in the middle of it. Uh, mm-hmm. great. Great. So, their second release was um, the, the Call to Arms. Call to Arms. Right. And then they they also had another limited edition release that was Connecticut Petite Bellicosa. Um, and so, are people scrambling to find these cigars? Is that it? I don't know, but all I know is that Tobacco Leaf was out the last time I went. Right, right. They didn't have any more of these. And I've seen them. You know, I saw them before when I was traveling a little bit more for work. I saw them starting to pop up at different shops, you know, and shops that have a really good reputation, um, like Cigar Mojo up in uh, King of Prussia. Okay. Um, you, know, you know, cigar shops that had, are known to have those boutique cigars. I think even maybe B and B might have them too, and outside of Philly. Huh. So you know, these these small these shops that. Have a reputation for for bringing in boutiques and having good quality boutique cigars. These are starting to show up. So, well, I tell you, when I was when I was putting together this this past month's worth of cigars at Tobacco Leaf, you know, I was I happened to be there about oh, it's about over a month ago now, and it was Mary and Yasser that were like, 
Because I was asking them, well, what cigar should I try? And they were like, well, you should try these. And both, and at the time they had both the, uh, this one, the, the Crook of the Crown, as well as the, the, uh, the Call to Arms. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we had them. But, but yeah, so I guess just so lucky that I happened to be at the right there at the right moment. Yeah. Has yours calmed down a little bit in spice? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, definitely. so is mine. Definitely. It's definitely like it, where it came up really, really strong and was really hitting the spice really hard. Now it's kind of like mellowed out the spice mm -hmm. a little bit, a lot smoother. I wonder if the spice comes from the Indonesian. You know, it'd be interesting. Or is that a Nicaraguan thing, the whole spicy, the black spice? I, I don't know, but it'd be interesting to, you know, when we lit it, we lit it straight up. And I'm wondering if we had actually toasted it and lit it, would it have been the same? Too bad we don't have any more cigars to try. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did George say there? George says that Rocky and Gurkha are two and the same to him. Well, kind of, sort of. One's a box maker, the other one tries to make cigars. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> they do make nice boxes. They do make nice boxes. <laughs> and what was the one that the one that we were smoking for a while there a couple years back? It was the index. That the, came in the copper chest. The Red Witch. The Red Witch. That wasn't too bad. No, it wasn't. But then, all right, the first time they, when they first put it out, it wasn't that bad. But then, I thought it was a good value. Yeah, it was a, a good, good value. A good cigar at a good value. But I got one on that second batch that came in. Mm -hmm. And man, it was, it was, there was so, there was so many, there was just construction issues. You know, they sit there trying to squish the whole cigar flat so I can get a little bit of a draw from it. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. Did, did I ever tell you the best story I ever had with Gurkha? No. So I, I did spend some time, you know, working as a vacuum shop, shop. And there was this guy that came in there, and we ended up calling him Featherman. Because skinny guy, just wearing this big black trench coat, his big hat, all these feathers coming off the hat. And he, he comes up and he, he asked me, he said, I'm looking for a pipe. I'm looking for a Venus pipe. And I said, well, we have some carved Meerschaum pipes and some might be of a woman. Sure enough, there is one. He goes, that's it. That's my Venus pipe. I said, okay, no problem. Right? Well, we'll take you over. We'll bring you up. And I said, well, that you know comes with an ounce of tobacco. You know, do you smoke aromatic or English? He asked me, do you have any Russian tobacco? And I said, no, I, okay, no tobacco for you. And I'm like crossing my fingers. He's just going to pick up the tobacco and he's going to leave. Oh, no, he's going to sit down. No, he sat down. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he was on his meds or he had just stopped taking his meds because he sat down and he's sitting there smoking. He sees a Gurkha poster. He goes, ah, Gurkha, is that Russian tobacco? And I said, no, it's it's not. And he goes, well, do you have any? Like, well, we ha they make cigars. He must have thought that guy with the big mustache was a czar. Yes. And I said, well, that's, you know, we ha they make cigars. He goes, well, do you have any? And I was like, yeah, there's the Red Witch is made by Gurkha. So he goes, oh, okay, I'll buy one. So he buys one. And then he sits there and he starts pulling tobacco out of the cigar and loading his pipe. Well, and I was like, okay, something's not right. He came in two more times, and each time progressively went down. And Did he do the same thing every time? Like pull, pull the cigar apart to? Put no, it no. It got it got worse as it went on. Um, you know, unfortunately, like I said, he it definitely seems like he did get off his medication. Um, the last time he came in, he ended up going in for a second. Uh -huh. So um, I have heard a, a sighting of him. Uh, hopefully, he's doing a lot better. Uh, but it's. It was one of those interesting moments working in a cigar shop. <laughs> um, the second time he was in, I will tell you, he brought in four Meerschaums and tried to smoke four Meerschaums at the same time. With Russian tobacco? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, but he tried to smoke four pipes at the same time. So That's not normal. No. Okay. 
That's not, I mean, I know pipe, pipe guys can be a little bit strange sometimes, but that's no, that's that seems a bit excessive. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So, well, is so is there actually a Russian tobacco? I'm sure there's tobacco from Russia, but we really don't get it here. There's a, I mean, China's one of the major producers of tobacco, but most of what we have is not. Do they really produce all tobacco? They produce a lot of tobacco. Well, that makes sense. That I mean, they've got so consumers. many different biomes in that large country of theirs. Well, looks like Georgia. Yeah, there you go. Well said, right. box makers. Yes, yes. You know, after such a, of a such a pronounced beginning, mm -hmm. it, it seems very mellow right now. Yes. But I got to be honest with you, I like that. You know, it's that that transition really is helps keep you engaged in the yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, you're sitting there for two hours and it's one note. Even if it's one fantastic movie. Right, we'll get tired. We'll get tired. Yeah. But after such... After such an overture at the beginning, to, 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 at the outset, it's almost as though, for me at least, it's almost as though it's harder to discern the flavor than that. Yes. Yeah. So it, it just broke off the point, a deep least. <laughs> and uh, but it broke, I mean it broke completely clean, straight, flat, flush. Yeah, I think this one wants to break too. You're not gonna get penalized this time. Thank goodness. <laughs> That'd be like a, a 20 minute penalization. <laughs> yeah, we're we're only what we, we are 37 minutes, so we started about well, I was going to start at 15 minutes, so we're only like 17 minutes. Yeah, you get heavy penalties at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just don't understand what the petite criminal We're talking about the World Championship Cigar. World, cigar Smoking World Championship. How that guy's able to make a petite for the last three hours, 26 minutes. I don't know. And it's not even the entire thing. It's not even the entire four inches. It's only like three inches. And I was just doing a lot of rules you were telling from last week, and it's it's very similar to the slow smoke pipe smoking contest. Now, the big difference, of course, is that you have two minutes to prepare and pack your tobacco. Okay. So, if you don't pack your tobacco right, it's all up to you. Whether you're just picking a cigar out of the box, it's going to be what it's going to be. Yes, yes. I agree. You know, but in pipe tobacco, you can actually how you pack it makes a difference. And some of those guys. What they'll do is they'll only light one corner. And they'll use their tamper and they'll rotate that amber around in the pipe. And Wait, how, are they just the, how are they rotating it in the pipe? With a tamper. They work oh. their tamper and slowly work that amber and distribute the amber around the pipe. To ignite it or just to keep it burning longer? Keep it burning longer. And then they'll also... You can you can dump your pipe, but if you act, dump it and you accidentally dump out your amber, you're done. You're done. So what they'll do is they'll use the pipe tamper to lift ash out from the pipe, so they don't have that big insulating ash left, uh, layer that could cause their pipe to go out. Oh, so if you leave the ash, it could it could cut off the air, it's right? Because it's just a, a giant insulating layer. So like mine's getting all crooked now. I see that. Like, I'm getting nervous that it's going to fall. But, I mean, you know, last week you were, you, you were trying to do the contest, and you are actually doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, it smoked all right, but, you know, I mean, like, I think at the end of the day, I think I timed it at 77 minutes. That's, that's a far cry from three hours, 26 minutes. I'm nowhere near that guy. Those Russians, man, they're very, very tough. Tough.
I would like to talk to that guy though. And just ask him, like, what's your what's the strategy? How do you do how do you do it for so long? What if they have anything on YouTube? You know, I never even thought to look. I should look that up. That's a good point. See, now I'm nervous. Now I'm nervous. I'm just going to knock it off. Right there. It's pretty darn flat. Yeah, that is pretty good. Hmm? I mean, you're right. I would have ended up in the right. You would have defleased. <laughs> If you did that retro, you'd still get a lot of that spice. All right, so you're saying, okay, let's try this. So you're, how are you doing this again? Okay. Explain this moment. All right, so it's just kind of, you have to relax yourself. And just kind of like, you're just exhaling through your nose. And you're relaxing your, your, your mouth so that the smoke flows through and exhales with so kind of like it flows to the back of your throat? Yes. Not down your throat. Yeah, well, close your mouth. Yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared. Well, it, it, it just, it's technically, it's after so many years of like conditioning yourself to not let it even come down your throat. It's very, I'm finding it very difficult. It's, so, it's just something to try. Maybe I should join the light cigar. I would. <laughs> this one, this one does put a tear in your eye. But I don't, I don't smoke light cigars. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd have to like buy a mac and or something just for that purpose of sitting there trying to. It doesn't necessarily be uh, a light cigar, but um, well, one that one that won't be too harsh. Do you need some more coffee? Yeah, I'll take some more. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. It is good. It's, it's starting now. Now here, at this point, it's starting to pick up again. Yes. Uh, I got a little bit of an increase in it as well. So, okay. So, it says, it's called so that. Where are you right now? I'm faster. I'm always faster. Right, I'll slow down now. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. So if you look at this, right, if you can see that. Okay, so this is the label or the band. And it is called the Crook of the Crown. Crow or Raven? Raven. So I'm thinking the crook, I've been thinking that the crook means the crook of the crown, right? The part that's like this, the crook. But maybe the raven is stealing the crown. That's what I'm thinking. And it's crook as in like thievery. Yeah. Absolutely. So is this metaphorical for JR and Lee, Lee stealing the, the cigar crown from, from, from these guys that told them they don't have a seat at the table? I would say yeah. I would say yes. And you know, when you, you see it in a, in a shop, it's, it's kind of unassuming. I mean, it's in a, in a box. It looks like it's like a Almost like a pine. Yes, yes, box, I, I kind of not, remember that. Yes, it's not a cigar box. It's like a tray. Yeah, but it has like a burnt finish over the tray with like a dark stain. Okay, and you'll see like a almost like a like a hand carved script on there, you know, stolen throne. and then inside the tray are the cigars. So they're coming in as bundles, you know, and it's just oh, they are coming in as bundles. 
Well, there's no box. But isn't that the? I thought that was the box. Well, the tray is the, essentially is like the box. Oh, it's not. It's just a tray, no. not not a box that's open. I mean, it could be. Okay. Very well, could be. Okay. I don't know how they're packaging it, really. But you know, it's unassuming. You know, I mean, even the band is relatively unassuming. Right. Like it's not that whole gold and like opulence that you see in a lot of other. Yeah. It's factors. it's simple. You never know. You know. It's kind of like a Van Garage. Those garage ones. Oh, okay. it's like the really yeah. underground kind of, almost right. underground. So, see, here's here's you know I you know why I, I'm enjoying we tell I'm enjoying it because I'm smoking it so fast, and I and I don't want to and I kind of put it down for a moment, but I can't down I can't help, I can't help <laughs> myself I can't help myself. Yeah, it's. That's why I said, you know, I, I would love, I would love to see in that Corona we get a little more of that ratio of the San Andreas, and just see how it changed. The only thing I can say is, at least it's, you know, a robusto and Toro, and it's a fifty grain. It's not like a fifty-two or fifty-four or something like that. You think those be too big? To me, I don't. Well, I just don't prefer that size. You like thinner cigars. I like that forty-six. 50, that's right right about where I, I'd like it, yes. You know, it's interesting, like, like I've been smoking since the 90s, right? And like 50, this is 50, but 52, 54 is a pretty common cigar size now. Mm -hmm. And I'm always kind of, if I think, if I really sit down and think about it, you know, one of the things we used to smoke in the 90s was like, Churchill's were real popular. Yeah. But a Churchill is only 48. Yeah. So, you know, comparatively, it's, I always think that the Churchill is, is as thick as this, mm -hmm. just from my recollection. I'm you know, just thinking about, but really, it's a much thinner cigar. Right. I'm always just surprised by that. I do. I, I like that Churchill size. But going back to, I mean, as far as traditional shapes, you really didn't, I mean, I don't think there really traditionally was a lot of bigger ring gauge cigars. No, 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 no. Yeah, I think I think Robusto was the, was always 50. Right. So that would have been like one of the larger, larger ring gauges. Right. Outside of like those trumpet style torpedoes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, now, yeah, now you see you know, 60. And then that used to be the big one. Now it's seven, then it was 70. It was 80. Really? Do people have 80s? Yeah. Asylum does 80. Oh, yeah, that's because they're crazy. I still want to try that 130. The fever? The fever. I still want to try that. Fever. I saw one. Where? Well, actually, no, I take it back. I saw two. Neither more for sale. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've held the actual mold that they make it in. Really? Yeah, when I was at the factory several years ago, Skip was showing us around, and like he showed us the mold for the femur. I was like, well, that's pretty awesome. I'd love to have one. <laughs> I would have spent the 50 bucks on it. Well, you know, now they're, they're, they're still doing a slobber knocker. Which one is that? That's the one with the double cap. I think it's like a 58. Or bigger, but it's like seven, eight. It's yeah, but it's not six, six seven. It's not, no, it's not in that capacity. I mean, I've seen people like, like short videos of people smoking that thing. That's ridiculous. No, so one of the guys I, I went to high school with, I saw a post that he put on there. He smoked three Woodies back to back. What's the Woody? Woody is made by. Um, it's the leaf, and the cigar is about as long as my forearm. What? Yeah, it's about as long as my forearm, and it's like it's a big ring gauge cigar. And he smoked three of them back to back. <laughs> Was he ill? I I would I don't I would only imagine. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. 
Well, I still have this one that I bought years ago. I did buy it more for like novelty. The uh, I don't know if you ever saw that the Poor's uh, Indios Chief. Oh, I've heard stories. It came in, it comes in like a big like uh, coffin. It's about, it is about that long. But it's not very it's not very thick. It's maybe like fifty two or maybe something like that. Now we have now I have to find out. They, that's what Google's for. Right, I am tearing through this. It's now we're now like forty minutes, forty five minutes into this, and I'm almost finished. I'm almost to the van. Um, so the Woody is a Honduran puro um, that normally takes four to five hours. Uh, but it is a 21 by 100. What? That's great. Yeah. 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 Um, 100. 21 <laughs> by 100. And let's see. So 100 or six, no, 60, 60 is an inch, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. So 100 is an inch and a quarter, inch and three quarters, more or less. That's pretty big. Almost as thick as the mozzarella. Yeah. <laughs> so George says, sometimes a bundle of cigars is more intriguing than an overdone box. Simplistic design is awesome. Yes, agreed, agreed with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's like the, it's like, for example, like, like PG and Roma are good examples of that, I think. Mm -hmm. Great cigars, very, very plain boxing. Absolutely. Especially the PG. Like the PG is just cabinet boxes. There's just nothing, mm -hmm. there's just nothing like exciting about it. Well, I mean, in Roma, that respect. Roma first came out. How long did they go without putting any bands on the cigar? Oh, yeah, yeah, for a long time. Uh, I know they, they didn't have any, any bands whatsoever. I got to smoke one of them, by the way. Did you? Yeah, yeah. So I went to visit uh, the headquarters in Austin, and Skip happened to be in town. So I called them up and said, hey, man. Be busy? He's like, I'll come over to the HQ and like, let's have a cigar. So me and this other buddy of his that, that, that lives in in, uh, in in the area, and he busted out one of the original, what, what were the original ones were the... Uh, Cro-Magnon? The Cro-Magnon. Yeah. Unbanded Cro-Magnon. Man, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. It's funny, when, you know, that cigar, you, that was, I mean, it's part of their core line, but now it's become an allocated product. Oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they just the demand is, is is pretty high for them. So you know, they only come out, you know, a couple times a year or so. Oh, right, right. But that's because they, they only have so much of it. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. The the and I, I gotta give them credit. I'd rather have somebody you know say, hey, either we compromise on the quality and we have it 100 percent available all the time. Or we maintain our quality standards, and we just don't release as much, mm -hmm. you know. And that kind of fortitude to the quality of the product, to me, speaks more about the brand than just kind of saying, "Well, if we make it, people will buy." I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, I remember in the in the years during, like in the late '90s, when we had the boom, and everybody scrambling to get cigars, manufacturers trying to make cigars, and manufacturers would just release cigars trying to meet the demand, and the cigars were way green, like, like unsmokable green. Like, you're like, what the hell is this? And the prices were astronomical for the times. You know, I, I saw something recently that kind of I never thought about before. I'm taking the band off because I'm too close now. Okay. It's it's terrible. Good. But this should be like a seven-inch cigar. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the point, the thing they kind of brought up is, what if there was no Cuban embargo? Okay, and what if the boom happened? Could Cuba maintain production? So I think the, art, the argument they are making is they've had that shift to Nicaragua, Dominican Republic. You know, other countries becoming your know, producers and leading producers. Did the Cuban embargo just force that to happen a little bit sooner, or would it have still happened because 
you know, Cuba might not have been able to meet the demand of the boom. That's an interesting question. I, I think, I don't know. I, I mean, like, part of the reason why there is an industry in Nicaragua is because, you know, basically the, ma the, the, the makers were exiled mm -hmm. from their home country. And they, they, they wanted to continue their craft and sought locations because of their exile. Had they not been exiled, I mean, they may have looked, it may have happened later. Right, I think we, we've been seeing that right now. That could be, yeah. They could be almost, they've been, because... The, presuming that Cuba couldn't keep up with demand. Right. It's just an interesting thought. And, uh, but I mean, also, like, it is the... And I think maybe, maybe the question is also, had Cuba not followed the, exactly the path that it went on, mm -hmm. and gone towards you know communism and like I, I don't really know anything about the Cuban agriculture there but has ag or has, has tobacco agriculture been limited in Cuba because of communist rule and it had 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 they not gone this path would they have greater output that would have compensated for it? right because they would have had a greater demand for it. So would there still be more of an agriculture? You know, um, would they presence? be able to cultivate more land and more, right, more exactly. crop, crop yield? I don't know. It's possible. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, one good. thing that is, I think that that would be true, we could, we could consider true, is that because of the embargo, because of the exile of, of the, uh, the many of the makers, we have a much more diverse cigar world today. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, but you still have those people that, that think, you know, Cuban cigars are, are the best cigars. Um, but you know, I mean, I put this, I, I put this right up there with it. Right. This is very, and, this is very good. Yeah, and I, I hold that that mentality as the Cuban myth. You know, I don't think it holds. Any water? Really? What do you mean? Saying that Cuban cigars are the best cigars in the world. I don't think that holds water at all. I see. I didn't say. I didn't say. The only reason why that really is there is because at the time when Cuban cigars became unobtainium, they were the best cigars in the world. But now, Nicaragua, I mean, yeah, George mentioned uh, Padron. Yeah, Padron, yeah. And companies like that have taken. You know the quality standards in tobacco, and just brought it way up. So, to me, their stuff just as good, and a lot of times even better. Yes, yes, yes. Although I must say that you know when you get some of these Cubans that are very good, mm -hmm. they are really amazing cigars. Very different. Like you don't get this heavy spice, heavy pepper normally in Cubans. Like I had this Cuban cigar in December, maybe November. December. I was in Frankfurt, Germany, and I went to the La Casa de la Bono. They just opened a new one in Frankfurt, and I was there. And, and I asked the guy, "Hey, what do you have that's that that's kind of new?" And he was like, "We have this Medvia Luna um, from um, Maybe it's still with Trinidad. Trinidad Medio, Medio, Medio Luna. Brand new cigar. Kind of robusto. Like a, like a thick robusto. Mm -hmm. Man, that was killer. Killer. Yeah. But, you know, you get a lot of them that are just kind of like, depending where you get them from, you can get a Monte Cristo number two that is just, why did I spend this money? What am I going <laughs> to do? What am I going to do with this box? <laughs> because it's just not good at all. It's like, what the hell is this? And I've, People have asked me about Cubans, and I, I, would, I would never buy a Cuban from Mexico or the islands. I just oh. don't. There, and there probably are good Cubans out there, good ones there, but there's just so much other counterfeit junk. Well, I, I think it depends where you go. Like the places that I go to in Mexico City, mm -hmm. there's a couple. There's two places that I go to mainly in Mexico City. Uh, 
they, I can't recall the name, but reputable dealers selling quality Cubans. And so I've had good experience. Now I, I, I do, I do hear you. Like, like for example, if you're in Manawa, right? And you're, so in the Manawa airport, it's Centino airport. There's, there's like this like marketplace before you, before you go through security. <laughs> and these little stalls, they all have Cohibas. You know, like, okay, we're not buying those. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, for and, sure. But that's the vast majority of people. Yes. You know, yes. I mean, it's, there's a, only really a small, there's a small percentage that actually, I'm going to hunt out that reputable, that one reputable shop. Yes, yes. You know? Yeah, and even in Nicaragua, yeah. there's really only one reputable shop. Right. In Manawa. It's right on, um, right on the, uh, the Caratenda Masaya. And you go there and they've got, they actually have not just, do they have Cubans? Yeah, yeah, they have Cubans. And they also have some non-Cubans as well. Okay. But that's that, but that's, pretty much the only place that I can think of, like in Nicaragua. And then you go to other countries like Salvador. In San Salvador, if you go to, what is it, the Hyatt or the Hilton Hotel there, there's a small shop that has Cubans. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard to, it's difficult to find Cuban, proper Cubans in most right. places. Right. And it's really easy to find that guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go down to my buddy's shop. He's two <laughs> doors down. He'll take care of you. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. You know? But I think George is right. Like the padrones are also very, very, very solid. Solid. The best thing about padrone is consistency. Yeah, and it's one of the hardest things because we're talking about a, a, a natural product that, with that crop year, could be completely different. When you pick up one, this year, you smoke one this year, you smoke one another one next year. So not even talking about an age difference. It's going to be. It's going to have that same thing. Yes, yes. Now, this is a lot different than a Padron. Oh, very much so. This is much more forceful. It is, but that Padron is like one new. And we've gone through a couple transitions, a couple changes yes. through this, where you would not have that in a Padron. Yes, yes. Yeah, if you smoke like a 3,000 or 4,000 or 5,000 Maduro, it's going to be pretty much the same experience the entire mm -hmm. cigar. Right. And I think that's most of what I smoke are boutiques. Finding a good boutique, they layer in that complexity. So you, you don't always have that, you know, you don't really have that one note. In the boutiques. Yeah. yeah. Well, in a lot, a lot of things. Somebody has taken the time to actually craft it and, and build it. And not necessarily and building it for a level of the cigar rather than Business where consistency is the emphasis. Is that fair to say? Well, yeah, yeah, but but I think even with the boutiques, they want. Well, they may, like let's say this one, right? This has this whole experience that that's that's that that's weight that's changing that that's giving you complexity of experience. I imagine that these guys want that consistency from batch to batch as well. So I don't necessarily think that consistency is a negative thing. No, yeah, it's yeah. definitely not. It's it is it is really important. You know, um, it's very very difficult because like if I had this cigar again, and so like in this entering the second third, that when we get to that more mellow part, if I had this cigar again and it was just that second third throughout the entire spectrum, mm -hmm. I would be disappointed. Yeah, after this one, right? Understood. One thing is nice is though, you know, sitting here talking with you, we had two different cigars. Yes. Great. Same box, same bundle, more or less. But we experienced the same things right around the same time. Yes, I agree. I agree. So, you know, that, that would tell me that at least the consistency for the most part has a very good chance of being. being yeah, it's well made. Right. I wonder what else this factory makes. This aroma's the hell up. Well, they, um, let's see. Unless they own this factory. I don't think they do. Did 
So yeah, if you're wondering out there, like, is this a cigar you should try? Yes, you should definitely run out, try, call your tobacconist, see who has it, and then go out and buy them. Like, in the so the one the one website that I was reading about this, the blindmanspuff.com guys, mm -hmm. they rated this a cigar at ninety four, and they were like, run and get a box. Yeah, yeah I would say that's a good that's a good assessment. Yes. Yeah. Ninety four. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't really understand how these people come to numbers. They're all subjective. I I normally don't prescribe too much of those. I can't find where I was at. So, for those of you watching, how is your cigars coming along? Let us know. Tell us. We want to know. How's that Romeo San Andreas coming along? Now, with the weather changing, mm -hmm. do you find your smoking habits change with that? In what way? Um, like what I smoke? Yeah, like flavor profile. No, no, no. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty consistent through. If you gave me a, like, for example, if you gave me a stack of Roma Craft Revenge, I would smoke them all. I would just be very, I'd be very, very happy. I would smoke, you know, if I had a box, if I had a stack of 10 boxes, I would smoke them all. Okay. Well, for Regardless me, of winter, winter, summer, spring, fall, I'm smoking. For me, as the weather starts to break, I start reaching for my pipes more. Oh. They would be in summer. You know, I might still why have is pipe, pipe. Why is pipe a more winter smoke for you? Um, what do you think? You know, when it's really hot outside, sometimes you don't want to it just warm. doesn't it just doesn't do well with the pipe itself. You know, the pipe does get warm. You know, and so you got a, a warm pipe, a hot day, and it's just my flavor flavor profile wise, cigar fits better with those warmer, hotter temperatures. As it starts to break, I don't know. But it feels good. And as it gets even colder outside, and you start trying to layer up and go outside for a smoke, if I smoke a cigar, just the condensation of moisture that builds up in the air, it just ends up with a not as good an experience. Mm. Do you find yourself going out in the cold? It will go. I will. Uh, as soon as I, when I, as I start getting more and more accustomed to it, but I definitely don't go out for it as long. Or, you, know. you know, I like this past this past winter. I didn't really go out much yeah. to smoke because you know what? A big, I, and I think a big reason is that I'm a very casual kind of person, meaning that I like to wear shorts and t-shirt for as long as possible, and. Man, sometimes when the guys are like, hey, man, we're having a fire, we're outside. I'm just not dressed. I don't even have a jacket to like, <laughs> a proper jacket to withstand being outside for hours. Just, I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass. No, I, 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 I took my dad's old hunting jacket. It's my smoking <coughs> jacket. Oh, okay. You okay. know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's warm. It's got really big collars on it. Put the collar up in my back so I don't get the wind on the back of my neck. You know, I go out and look like a hillbilly. Kind of it's a camel? Oh, yeah, it's a woodland camel. It's like that nice. old school woodland camel. Nice. So, you know, I got my, my knit hat on. You know, I go out there and sit, enjoy it. But to hang around a bonfire, have a you know, a few cigars and some, some drinks. Perfect. Perfect. No, that's not that is Well, you know, for me, it's like, you know, but I think part of what has changed in my world was, was moving to this roastery. Okay. Right? Because at this roastery, I've kind of made a space where we can smoke and have heat and have ventilation. So my tolerance for being outside <laughs> has plummeted. I'm just like, 
Well, everyone, I'm, I'm just going to turn you on. And I have, I have. That's you know, really terrible. The, um, you know, man, like, so every year I go hunting with my father and all his buddies. Okay. Okay. And we go out to the cabin. The cabin's got electricity, um, but there's no running water in the cabin. Right? Right. And we'll go out there. How do you take a dump? There's an outhouse. <laughs> oh, okay. Then. So we're out there. We have a bonfire going or a fire going the entire time. Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, that we're there. And even in the rain, there's a fire going. Right, right. And... You know, for the last few years, I've taken out, I've taken oysters up there because November, we're right there where the oysters are getting good. So, you know, I'll pop some oysters and I'll make some like charbroiled oysters and just put an old, like, like it's like an old oven grate. Just throw that over top of the fire and just put the oysters right on top of the grate, you know, nice, and nice. just get that nice kind of thing going and sit there with your cigar, eat some charbroiled oysters, have a few drinks, and, uh, more than a few drinks, and uh, it, it's just a good time. And that is a nice time. That's a nice time. You know, if if a deer comes by the picnic table, somebody might get one. <laughs> <laughs> They've actually shot two deer from the picnic table, so it's happened. So you got the guns ready? I don't, because I'm drinking <laughs> and eating and smoking. What, these, nobody else drinking? Uh, other people might be, but they're Some ready. people are they're, they're ready for their deer. Right. <laughs> well, you know, a guy might be coming out of the woods, and so then all of a sudden the deer walks up after he, when he's hanging out by the fire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so what is, hey. is it George saying? If I can buy three Nicaraguans for one Cuban, then there's no argument. Oh, yes, yes, I can hear you on that. Mm -hmm. Tony's like, can't smoke the packaging. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, I guess he's, he's falling back to that Gurkha thing. So, you know, with Gurkha, you buy the box and you get some uh, uh, mulch with it. And compost. Oh, man. Yeah. So, George is also down to the nub on the Romeo, but it isn't really good. Oh, oh it's too bad. Sorry. Yeah, that try to and Then he's also an Eskimo in the winter for his relaxation. He doesn't mind. He doesn't mind that it's yeah. cold weather. So, you know, but that's actually brings up another thing. When you get, if you're trying a new cigar, do you normally just buy one or do you buy two? Normally one. Normally one? No. Now, one. if you smoke that one and it wasn't necessarily, it was an okay cigar, would sometimes. Then I'm happy. It, huh? Then I'm happy. Would you buy it again though? Just to see. If, if it was, was just okay? It was just okay. Uh, probably not. So I've done that because I'm, I'm I'm busy trying to stack boxes of revenges. Right, you're going so, to the old reliable. Yeah. So if I have that mm -hmm. waiting, then I don't really. Then I'm like, okay, I'll have one. I'll buy one of these to try. Right. It, for me, I'll smoke one. If I liked it, but I was like, hey, it's okay, but I, I don't know. Sometimes I'll go buy that cigar again, just to see. Well, maybe it was me. You know, maybe there was something in my palate that day, that moment, that everything didn't align. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, looks like an Eskimo. <laughs> yeah, I've excellent, been there. Excellent. Kind of, it's like a kid in the Christmas story. He's like, I can't put my arms down. That's like, it's a cartman, not a cartman. What's, no. what's the guy in not the... Not Ralphie. What's the, the kid's name? The young kid. The one that gets killed all the time. Oh, Kenny? Kenny. It's like oh, Kenny okay. in the, in the cover yeah. in the... But Kenny, you don't, you can't, you can't smoke. Right, right, but everybody's all bundled. Yeah, right. Yeah. Kid in a Christmas story. Like, Ralphie! So you will buy another cigar. I will buy another one, yeah. But it's, you know, a perfect example was of that was the um, Sin Compromiso. I mean, it's an expensive cigar. It's, it's, you know, $17, $18. And the first one I had, I was like, eh, this is okay, but it's not really $18 okay. I just didn't get it. And then I got another one. And that second one, I was like, okay. Now I, I do understand it. But to be honest with you, most of them that I see in the shops, they're, whenever I want one, they, even if the cigar shop has one, 
it's like a 56 ring gauge or something that I just don't like that size. Right, right. So okay. I'll pass. You know, it's interesting you say that. Like, like, if it's an $18 cigar and I try one, now, first of all, $18 is pretty much if it's above $13, I'm really not even thinking about it for the most part because I think that. First of all, I think above thirteen dollars is getting to be too much money for one smoke, and then I also am thinking that for less than twelve dollars, sometimes for as low as seven dollars fifty cents, I can buy <laughs> revenges all day long. <laughs> Why would I spend that kind of money on a cigar that I don't know, that right. I don't, that I'm, that I just don't know, and, and so I'm. I'm a little. I'm very kind of like price averse, averse in that re, in that respect. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a situation where, like, let's say I bought a cigar that was eighteen dollars, and I tried it, and I had an okay experience with it that I wasn't blown away by, I probably would not try it again. Like, I would not spend my money on it right. because it's a to me that's. I've already spent. I'm already. I've already lost. I'm already down by eighteen dollars in the experience. Right. I don't want to be down by thirty-six dollars. Understood. Yeah. So, uh, the Tony, yeah, three is the magic number for me. Oh. Um, trying new cigars, and you know, that's not for me. It, 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 it's two. I might not do two at that same, at that exact moment, but it might take three cigars to find out do I really like this or not, or is have I really. Did I really get everything that that cigar was trying to to be? Okay, I hear you. 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 But I'm I'm also one of the people that, in my in my perspective, you know, I'm also one that's like, especially if I'm spending more money, especially at the above thirteen dollars, uh -huh. I would. Especially at that price point, I expect it to perform right, right off the bat. Like it's like if I go to a restaurant that's that's high, that's that's pricey and regard, highly regarded. You know, if I don't have a great experience, I, I don't want to go back. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, and I get, I get it. Some people are probably out there like thinking, well, you know, you, you need to give it a chance, and and I, I get that. Don't get me wrong. I really do understand what, that 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 line of thinking, but. And as an operator myself, you know, who who does run a, a place, a coffee place that that is arguably one of the most expensive in America, yeah. definitely in Baltimore, yes, and, and probably one of the more expensive ones in the country. You know, it's my intention as an operator that we have to perform very highly from the get go, yeah, because you know, if you if we're going to charge you like you know, I don't know, whatever we charge for the coffee. Mm -hmm. Let's say the more esoteric coffees are eight dollars and above. You need to have a great experience to you feel like right. you have value. And Absolutely. as a consumer, I also see it that way. In that you know, if I'm not getting value from right away, mm -hmm. then I'm really not inclined. Like okay, so, where that will change for me? In, in like let's see what the cigar. Like let's say I spend eighteen dollars on a cigar. And I try it, and I kind of find it to be not particularly to not, not particularly thrilling. If I'm talking to someone who, whose opinion I really respect, and they're like, "Man, this cigar," and whose whose palate I tend to match with, and they're like, "You know what, man? This is the cigar you need to to, to try it. That's really awesome." I said, "Well, I did try it. It wasn't that great." Like, "Oh no, man, you need to," and they're really super enthusiastic about it. Mm -hmm. Then perhaps then I will try it. Again. Okay. And perhaps then I will try it again. You yeah, and there's. Speaking of that, when I used to work in the restaurant business, you know, there's so many times we'd have those those meetings where we tell the, the, the staff, the servers, like, don't be an order taker, be a server. Okay? You, you know, order taker, you're just writing something down they want, and that's it. As a server, you're acting more or less as a guide, that you're help building that experience. Yes, you know? yes. And, that if you get somebody to understand that and to develop that, then you have a much 
you're building a much better culture within the business. Yes, I agree with that. I agree with that. So, and that was, that was always the biggest thing. So you like to sing company, so? I thought the sing company. I, you know, I don't, I, I'm conflicted. Oh, okay. Because I've had it and it's been fantastic. And I've had it and it's been okay. And so it's very much like the stars have to be all aligned and every day has to be right. And then it's fantastic. It's great. It's something different. It's really good. But then I've had it and when the stars weren't aligned, it was like, okay, this is okay, but uh, I probably could have bought two revenges for this. You know? Yeah. Well, see, to me, that's the, that's the concern. It's like, do I want to smoke cigars that in order for me to enjoy them, the stars have to be in alignment. Right. Because the stars are not always in alignment, you know? And it's right. like, you know, it's like, it's like but, but another, conversely, like, it's also, I have to say, for me, it is also price, right? Like, one of the cigars that I really, really enjoy, have enjoyed over the over years, over years' time, is that uh, T-52 Bellicosa Maduro, Maduro State. Great cigar, right? Right. Man, there was time when I would have a box of it, and I would just be sucking them down. Yeah. But once they creeped up to, like, 15 plus, yep. man, I haven't smoked one in, like, two years. I know. I haven't, I haven't smoked one in a while, and it's, it's unfortunate because... You like for me, I got to the point where I was like, you know what? I'm not smoking the cigar. I'm smoking the name. You know, I'm smoking that Drew Estate Liga Provada. There's so much. It's, what do you mean you're smoking the name? I'm not really following you. So when I say I'm smoking the name, it's all the branding and the hype and the the, the name brand behind that cigar. This cigar. You mean that's the reason you're smoking it? Well, it's well, the reason you're paying, the reason paying that much. Okay, okay. I mean, this cigar, I would stack this cigar and put it right up there next to that that one, but there's a five dollar price difference because you buy it, like this this cigar doesn't have a great big following right now. It's brand freaking new. You know, it's so that Drew Estate, Drew Estate has a name, they gotta pay for all the uh the swag and everything else and you know, the, the culture and the lifestyle they're kind of putting forth as a company, it's it's a good cigar. Mm-hmm. But yes, at that yes. price point, there are other cigars that are better. And if it was just two dollars lo- less, it'd be even it'd be even better. What are they, uh, oh yeah, thanks, Tony. Yeah, What's the uh, he said the uh, the Magica, which is I think like the Churchillish size. From where? From uh, uh, Sin Compromiso. Oh, I'm not familiar. Verita Magica? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a new cigar? No, no, the Sin Compromiso, but the Magica is a size. It's like a Churchill size. Oh, okay, okay. He's, and he, t- Tony, that's perfection. But for $18? Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, that's really why I don't smoke Davidoff. Davidoff. Mm-hmm. You know? And I've had, like, the Special R. The Special R? Right? Awesome cigar, but twenty five dollars. I know. I'm not. A, I'm not of that kind of now, means. Tony also brought up a new, another point. Yes. So, from Stone Throne, which one do you like better? This, this one, the Crook of the Crown, or the the other ones? The that they that we smoked. Were interesting. All right. So on the show, what was it? Three week, three or four weeks ago, we smoked the um. The Sumatra. Were you here for that? I was not here for. I think that was the one with David? I think so. Yeah. So we smoked the... No, no, not with David. Um, with your friend from New York. Oh, yes, Tony. Right. So Tony was here, and we smoked the... Um, what's it called? Call to Arms. Call yes. to Arms Sumatra. And then, actually, I smoked the Call to Arms Sumatra Robusto this past weekend when I was at Tobacco Week picking up these other cigars. And very good. Very good. This fits me better. I, because it's got that punchiness, it's 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 exciting, it's like mm-hmm. flavorful, spicy. It's got that, yep. like you said, that 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 kind of like it's power. Then 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 back again, and 
Mm-hmm. It's got that roller coaster to it, that, that kind of excitement to it. And I smoked one this weekend as well. I, I, I got the call to arms. I smoked one on Saturday myself. Mm-hmm. And you know what? And that was the Corona size. Oh, and they do make a Corona size. In that, in that one, they do have a Corona size. And I would grab this yeah, yeah. 100%. This I'm sucking down like madness. That yeah. other one, I was just, I was just smoking. And, mm-hmm. Enjoyable. But this, to me, is more exciting, more interesting. Yeah, this fits my clear profile as well. Super Lonsdale. Sorry. Not Churchill. Super Lonsdale, which would be more like a Churchill. And George is saying, if I spend $20 on a cigar, it burns slow with awesome taste, and it's a value to me. I might not get that out of two $8 sticks. It's about who's and that's true. I can see that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, there's another point to it to that. You know, sometimes I've I've got those cigars in my humidor that I'm like, oh I'm trying to save this. I don't want to smoke this right now. Why? You know? Maybe because it, it, it's like let's take uh, the 2018 craft. All right, I still have two of those. I can't smoke that one. I know. It's just punching me in the face <laughs> the whole time. It's like a, a, it's like I'm getting blistered, you know. Okay, how about the uh, the 2019 River City? I still have like two or three of those. River City, the River City Craft. That oh, was I that. only had one of those. Okay, the one you gave me. Okay, and that one I still have two or three of those. And I'm like, I don't really want to smoke that just yet, you know. But then you can hold on a cigar, and you're know, for that special event or. You can make that cigar a special guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you just have to say, you know what? This cigar is going to make a special guy. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because, like, and we're asked to talk about it because last year, March 2019, I was in Florida mm-hmm. to go to Disney. And while I was there, I went down to Corona Cigars in, uh, in Kiss Me, which is an awesome shop. I don't know if you've been there yet. No. If you go to Orlando, you have to go to one of Kiss Me. It's, it's a fantastic shop. Outdoor seating, indoor seating, a bar. Amazing selection of cigars. Mm-hmm. Well, they had this cigar by Davidoff. Right? And it's a Florida. It's a Florida cigar. I think it has some oh, Florida. Yeah, cigar, right? yeah, yeah. So I smoked one there. Man, it's probably like $27, right? It's ridiculously priced. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Fantastic smoke. Right. I bought another one. I still have it. It's still, it's actually in the other room. It's sitting in a bag with the humidification device in it. It's been sitting there for well over a year and a half now. Right. I haven't smoked it. Yep. And I don't know why. Exactly. I mean, I mean every time I look at it, I'm like, I should smoke this now. But then I'm always like, it's not the right moment. Like, right. It, it should be a special moment. Right. Hey. But, there's no special one. I had one of those. It was a, uh, it was a Fuente, a Nejo. I think it was a Shark, and it was from Faders. Oh, and it was you know the last time they got those in, I got them one, and it had been sitting in my box for that entire time. It's been three years now, and oh, it's sitting at the top because I'm not you know it's a good cigar, but I'm not a giant Fuente head. Yes, so, yes. So, you know, it was kind of like, should I smoke it? Should I smoke it? And one day I was just like, I got to get rid of this. Thing. I got to just smoke it and enjoy it. And it was, it was great. It was good. But, you know, you know, it's kind of like you look at it and you're like, why, what am I waiting for? Yeah. You know, exactly. There's a lot of guys that have those cigars that are unobtainium that, that just sit. You know? Um, there's one guy who used to live in the area, um, and... He was, he, he was a big cigarette smoker, but he had these pipes that were thousand dollar pipes. They're beautiful, wow. okay, and they're really well known makers, high grade pipes. Never smoked them. Huh. He was afraid to smoke. Them. He never smoked them. Never enjoyed it. And there's a another guy in the pipe club who's. You bought these Dunhills. They were really expensive Dunhills. And he said he's just, he's afraid to take a match to it. 
they're really nice pipes. But it's like, well, you want the pipe to enjoy it. Take fire to it. You know, smoke it. Oh, so what's, what's Tony got? So Tony says, remember PG. Oh, remember, PG says they're meant to be smoked. You just need to respect the artisans that made them. Devote the time and attention to the smoking experience. Well, I think that's a good point. But, right. that, but to that same point, right, this Davidoff, Florida, it's, if, if we have that in mind, right, this whole idea that we want to respect the artisans that made them, mm -hmm. after smoking that first one and having such a fantastic experience with it, I kind of, part of that is I feel like it's the same thing with the uh, the Roma Atla Atla Atl Atlatl yeah. that I picked up when we went to that place in uh, Virginia. Right. That's been sitting there since June. And it's one of those things where I would love to smoke them, but I want I do want to give that proper attention. Right. Are you afraid that if you that speaking of the Florida devil, are you afraid that you have that in your head from the first one? And then if you smoke the second one, it won't meet the same experience that you had. Well, so he, he, it's, I don't know if it's necessarily that, but like let's say the, the Florida one, for example. Mm -hmm. I smoked that one, and I was just sitting at the cigar shop, just enjoying myself and having a drink and, and just having a nice time with it. And it was just like, wow, this is fantastic, right? I think that part of my reticence to smoke it has been I would like to be able to sit down and give it my attention and really just enjoy it. Where most of the time when I'm having a cigar, mm -hmm. I may be just, you know, shooting the stuff with friends or I want to be, I want to watch some kind of TV show or movie, mm -hmm. which means that my attention is not being, is being diverted. Right. Where I feel like these are such, like that one is such a stellar cigar that I want to like be there. I want to be in that moment. Yeah. And I just don't have that, I'm just not making that 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 session where I can be in that moment. Right. Or like the Atlatl, right? It's like, I hear so many wonderful things about this, this Lancero that again, when I smoke it, since it's the only one that I've had, and it's one that you really can't get to eat readily, right. you want to be in that moment for yeah. as well. Yeah. And I, one of those cigars that I have that I like that right now is the H-Town. Neanderthal and Lancero, because that's now been two years ago. Okay. So that, you know, it's the last one sitting from that box that I had. And once I smoke it, it's all gone. It's gone. You know? And they don't make any more of those? They do make them, but you know, now they, they're not distributed exclusively through H-Town. Um, but it's also, once I smoke that last one, it's gone. It's like there's I've got a couple of Don Boscos that didn't come back out this year. That same thing, um, you know. And that's also another reason why sometimes my pipe tobacco hoarding becomes uh, the same thing. <laughs> you know, you don't want to. We're talking. We before earlier today we we're talking about it. I have. I, I bought. I bought actually this tobacco last year. And I bought a total of 10 tins. It only comes out once a year. Uh, it worked work with Cornell and Deal to make that tobacco. It's like 40% Dominican uh, double A uh, Royo leaf. And, you know, it's tin 412 out of 2,000. The number? Yeah. And the I bought, I bought the maximum I could at the time. Because you, you're limited to how many you could buy, so I bought ten. Was that the maximum? That was the maximum you could buy with, you know, that purchase at that, that time. And I opened one as soon as I got it. And I smoked it. I said, wow, this is great. I put the rest of them inside the closet, and I just now opened the second tin. And the probably the only reason why I opened the second tin is because it's coming out to the time when it's going to be re-released. You know, but, you know, you're like, should I pull this from my cellar? Should I open this? You know, it's only doing happy things. That's done a lot of really happy things in just one year. So I still have eight tins 
And I'm like, I, from last year's vintage, I'm like, I, I don't really want to keep popping them because they're going to keep getting better. You know? It's that uh, conundrum. Yes, but you're going to be replenishing them. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, getting back to what Tony was saying, with the new ones compared to that one, yes, they, they are the same. I don't think there's anything different in that cigar. It's just when it's H-Town, I know what vintage it is. I know that's an older cigar. Right, right. So when that's gone... They just have the regular banded ones. There's no way to tell that this is one of the earlier cigars from that release. So that's why I think it stayed in the box. It really hasn't been defiled. So I understand. I understand. I understand. I'm, I'm just concentrating right now and not burning my fingers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, your, uh, your cutters have a little... Pick on there, don't they? You want to? What's that? Oh, this? I can use a pick on it. I mean, if it's burning your fingers. Oh, it's burning my fingers. Like, like it's burning them pretty hard right now. Like to the point of hurting. Do you need me to, to get it? Here. Maybe I should. I'll, I'll, I'll help you. Hold it like this. <laughs> there you go. This is really good. This is yeah, really, yeah. Actually, my what I'm thinking is like, you still have a little while to go. So part of me is thinking maybe I should go grab a small cigar to continue. But all I have right now that are small are these PG um, Torito Maduros. And after smoking this, it's going to wash that. It's going to wash it out. So it's like it'd be a waste. Uh, George, I don't know if you asked me, the Tobacco Leaf has these cigars. They did have these cigars. I don't know if they have them. No, now. they don't have them now. Where's George located? Do you know? I'm not sure. George, where are you? George is local, I think. Is he local? Yeah. Okay. Um, I did look, when I was look, trying to look that back up, I, there are some people online that carry them. Uh, so Cigar Federation also sells, sells them. But when I looked, they were sold out. Yeah, I thought they were. They were sold out today. When I looked. Yeah. Um, Actually, everyone that I saw, I only looked at a couple couple uh, online places that, that came up when I did the Google search. Mm -hmm. And the two places that I did look were sold out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could call down to the shop down in Virginia Beach, I suppose, oh. and see if they have them. Or, um, like I said, I, I believe I did see them at Cigar Mojo. They might have them. Um, so do they actually have a cigar shop? Yeah, yeah. Like an actual cigar shop. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's um, called Atlantic Dominion. The, uh, I think State Line Cigar Shop, I think, did have them. Um, because they, they have a, it's a weird, weird shop, man. Yes. Have, you ever, have you ever been there? Yes, yes. I mean, you go in there and it's all like, like a Kino cigarette shop. And then you kind of, it's got like, you know, Weed smoking, you know, pipes and all sorts of craziness. And then they got this humidor that's over on the right hand side. And you're like, ah, I really don't know. And you go in there and like, it's ridiculous. What do you, how do you have this? Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Now, I don't know. The manager there is a little bit weird. Is he? He's our, yeah. I've never met him. I mean, he's a little bit weird. But um, they do have a stupid selection. And their prices are normally pretty good. Yeah, yeah, very good. Very yeah. good. And I mean, so, the one time I walked in there, they had the first time I walked, they had Wonderlusts. Yeah, yeah, he, and what he had all, he had three sizes of the regular production. Yeah, the Bellicosas, the Bustos, and the Toros. Yeah, and there was only three production sizes. Right, he had he had a box of Don Boscos at one mm -hmm. time too, and the Don Boscos was only sold through um, Old Dominion Tobacco down in Virginia. Oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. So he's got some stuff. Yeah, he had Waimaros, he had the, uh, what's that, the fourth dimension, what was it? Was it? Yeah. The, the triangle. triangle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fable. Fable, Fable. Yeah, that, those were from uh, Miles, but 
then he also had he had a box. That's where I found my war bears. War bears. Yeah, the Palestine uh, war bear. Oh, yeah. Uh, I. That's another one that's sitting. I have one left sitting in my box. I haven't smoked. The reason I haven't smoked is because yeah, I, I, I found another one. Yeah. The Palestinians are really interesting. That they're made by Roma. They are made by with Nico Sueño. Yep. But they're really different. Yeah. Like. At least the one, I, the first time I had them, I was, I was down at JR's in uh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I got one there, and it was really, really strong. Just very different. Very no, different. Not necessarily, not bad different. Just mm. different. And I mean, it wasn't necessarily to buy taste, mm -hmm. but it was, it was a good cigar, but very, very different. Right. And the same thing we said with Fable. Fable is completely different than what... Um, we're used to from Nico Sereno as part of the core of Roma. Which, yes. And, which is not a bad thing. No, but it's, it's interesting to see that you try that or like the white motto. Yeah, right? yeah. It's also made there. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting to try those because you really see that the, the Esteban Disla and the factory really have this depth that's not, that's beyond what Roma can produce. Yes. I think that's very interesting. You know, there's the, the one... That I never, I never did get, which was the um, the one they did for uh, Schuster, the twenty annuals. Oh, I've had that. Did you have I've that? I've had one? that. I've had okay. That. Yeah, I, I got that when I was in Germany, uh, like last year. Okay. The one that I would like to try that they make is the Ouroboros. The one for that. There's a there's some cigar shop that they make it for in Chicago. Yeah. I just never never got to order it again. Oh, Elkin City. Yeah, that's where I grew up, George. Ah, there we are. Yeah, he's out of the uh, he's out of all of the stolen thrones because I smoked the very last call to arms they had in the store. Did it on Saturday? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, George. <laughs> hey, hey, I got me. I go out and I see these somewhere. They're definitely on the radar. I wouldn't hesitate. Yes, agree. One agree. Bit, picking one up. And the price is good. Yeah. yeah. Price isn't bad at all. So here that what translates to what? 1150? 12? If it's 1050 MSRP? Yeah, something like that. I don't think they're much over 11 at the tobacco leaf. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. So Tony, you never told us what you're smoking tonight. What you guys are all smoking down there. I gotta admit, I don't know if I'll be able to uh, to nub it like you are. <laughs> this is desperation. Is it? Just to keep the just to keep it going. Right. <laughs> uh, Tony's got the three-year-old underground shade going on. All right, I'm gonna put this down now because I'm burning into the to the cutter now. You know, it's it's, it's amazing how things change as they age. I mean, cigars. So, yeah, tobacco in general. Yes. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing what one year does. And you get to that five-year mark. I mean, it's amazing how different. Some better than others, but, you know. There is something to say that, uh, that yellow cello. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. But I have found that over the years that there are cigars will go through even a dormancy stage. Mm-hmm. So I've got these cigars that I've had in, in my human world for, well, over 20 years now. And through this time, they're, they're basically Fuente um, uh, Selection Provider number ones. And I remember I had them for a long time and I was like, oh man, you know, it, it's one of those things where you, like you're saying with, with like this, you know, you're buying them, you buy this box 
and you're aging them, you're keeping them. But in my case, you know, I had this one box. Right. In the ideal world, you find a cigar you like, you buy a box and you're gonna age it. The next year you buy another box. Yeah. And then the next year you buy another box. So you always have this box, at least one box that's aging at, at a certain age. Right. Well, if you, if you don't do that, you have this one box now that's 10 years old, 12 years old. And then you try it at 12 years. And the cigar was just like, oh, like, oh man. I have waited too long, right? Like, <laughs> I'm screwed now because it's whole box and it just is terrible. So you wait. Wait maybe another five years. And do you try it again? Expecting it to be this. Uh... But it came back alive. It was like, well, this is really good again. So I think that in long term storage, some, well, I don't know if this is not true, it may not be true for all, but at least in the cigars that I've experienced, they've had a period of dormancy and then they came back again. So I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's anyone that's done any kind of studies on this, but I, I'm guessing, you know, anecdotally, mm -hmm. that there is this dormancy and then peak and dormancy peak and dormancy. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. And there's, that works also with pipe tobacco too. Um, you know, there's some blends that have more natural sugars in it, and those that have more of the natural sugar, there's more stuff for potential. You should really afford it to, for long-term aging. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we're talking 10, 15 years, you know, something, something like that. And I don't know, for me, aging pipe tobacco is a hell of a lot easier than aging cigars. <laughs> so that's why most of my stuff that's aging is is pipe tobacco. Versus. Well, in pipe tobacco, you, you don't have to even think about it. It's already sealed, so there's yeah. nothing to think. You just toss yeah. it wherever you want. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep it out of the song. That's it. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about the whole human vacation thing. And did I tell you how much I actually found out I had in unopened tins? Oh no, tell me, tell me. Thirty-one pounds. And we're talking about one bowl averaging about three grams. So that's like four thousand bowls. Thirty-one pounds. Thirty-one pounds. Thirty-one pounds. All right, let's see. Let me see. Okay, so. 31 pounds. So in a a pound of a pound is yeah. equivalent to 453 grams. Okay. And how much how much do you put in a bowl? Three. So you have 14,043 grams of tobacco. And you have some three? Yeah. You can smoke 4,681 bowls. Right. Right. And if I factor that maybe I only if I smoke five bowls a week. Right, five, five bowls a week. That's nine hundred thirty-six weeks. Okay, and divide that by fifty-two weeks out of the year. Right, that's eighteen years of smoking. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> that's just ridiculous amounts. <laughs> you know, now, you know. For me, it's like I've got these cigars, right? So I've got a, at my home. I've got this pretty sizable humidor, and there's a lot of. Boxes worth of cigars. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I never counted, so I don't know. But you know, I'll tell you. I, I sit there and I think to myself, "My God, you know, I actually, I buy cigars. I'm smoking cigars, but I'm not. Use, I'm not smoking these cigars, right? And, you know, I'm 51 years old now. How long before I drop dead? Can I smoke these cigars before I, that happens? Right. Why? And then if not, why am I keeping these things? It's kind of, you know, of all of our friends that have cigars, mm -hmm. who keep cigars, I think the smartest guy of them all is Scott DeFries. Because he keeps nothing. Yeah. He buys and then he smokes. So if he was to drop dead tomorrow, he would not have wasted any of his money. He is an investment. <laughs> yeah, but if you, what's the investment if you're dead? Yeah, well, there, there are guys that do sell pipe tobacco out there. And there are tins that are this size that will sell for four hundred dollars because they're aged. Well, yeah, because they're they're well, not they're made rare. anymore. They're rare. But yeah. yeah, and more than that too. Yeah, yeah. Like, like for some, I have tobacco, cigar, pipe tobacco at home. Not much, but certainly more than I ever smoke. Like, I don't yeah. smoke pipes hardly at all. I. 
ostensibly will never go through those. <laughs> Why do I even have them? It makes it really makes no sense at all. So uh, George switched over to the ME in Tatuaje, and oh, that's the Mexican, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think there is isn't there two? Yeah, there's an ME and ME two. Right, and they come in the white. Green and red label. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's that is a, a solid cigar. Oh, 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 it is a solid cigar. Very much so. Yeah, and, and yep, you got sticking with that San Andreas. That's right. Oh, with the underground chain. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The um. Oh, the with the Emmys. Oh, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, that's a good cigar. I've only had a couple of those mm -hmm. at the at the last tobacco at the last tobacco week that with the I think it was last year. I had the Emmy two. And I, I, I remember picking them up when they, they first came out. And sometimes, you know, if I'm on the road or whatnot and I go into a shop, you know, I'm be looking around and I know if I, if I see that, I know I'm going to enjoy it. So now, Tony, do you know of any other cigars that are out there that are using that Indonesian leaf. Because we were trying to think about that earlier. And, uh, you know, I guess our, we couldn't really... I know people have used it. I still know a lot of people that are using it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. We were trying to figure that out earlier. Because mm -hmm. that, that seems... At least from my perspective, that seems to be an unusual choice nowadays. Right. I mean, you see Sumatra, you see, you know, uh, but it's also... Well, it's, which is an Indonesian leaf, too, so... Yeah. But you also have, like, um, Peruvian tobaccos. Mm, okay. You know, I, I know um, M. Bombay uses that, Fratello uses it. Um, even, I think, some avos use that Peruvian kind of leaf. But it's not... When you think of cigar... Tobacco producing countries, you don't think of Peru. No, no, not you at know? all. Not at all. Or Ecuador. You don't really think about those countries. Oh. So, Tony, uh, yeah, you don't know anyone using it correctly. Currently, currently. Oh, currently? Sorry. Currently. Uh, correctly, look, from as far as I am from the modern. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean because we're, we, we enjoy cigars, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've been kind of fascinated about is the trade of tobacco, right? Yeah. So not too far from where we live here in Baltimore is, of course, the Pennsylvania Lancaster region that produces, amongst other things, Pennsylvania Broadleaf that people are starting to use, have been starting to use more, right, in yeah. cigars over the last few years. So a couple, about three years ago, I started going up to Pennsylvania just to do day trips, just to just to get out of the house and do something different in life. And as I was driving, I would be driving around like Lancaster County, I would see like different farms with tobacco. Right. You see the barns and then after a while they're hanging in the, the, the leaves in the barns and all that. And what I'm, and, and this is really directly as a result of that I'm in, since I'm in the coffee trade, right? I'm, I'm just curious and fascinated as to the tobacco trade. Yeah. Like it seems like, Okay, so these guys who have these farms of Pennsylvania Broadleaf, mm -hmm. how do they sell it? That's what right. I mean. And you know, like, I've never really seen a farmer in the field, so like, just pull over and be like, hey man, can I talk to you for a moment? <laughs> Might get shot for all I know. But um, they're normally good Amish folk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably not you, man. But uh, I've always just been fascinated. Like, how, do you, how do you buy tobacco? Well, did you get a, your, a ticket for the barn smoker? No, I did, not. I did not. I would like to, but... Yeah, so, I mean, they, the tickets went on sale, and because of everything happening this year, they canceled the event. Right. They still did, but they did it virtually. You know, that you could kind of go in through, I think, the Facebook page and actually see them talk about it. Um, and they would, you smoke with them? You could, I mean, smoke at home, watching it. Did they send you the cigars? No, they didn't send any oh, cigars, okay. but, like... Yeah, well, actually, speaking of that, all of a sudden, this weekend, I got a box at my door that had the swag I would have gotten from that event. 
But not the cigar. But not the cigars. That's what I got. I got stickers. You know, Could they not send you the cigars? I, I, I don't. They, they might have been able to, but they gave me a full refund. And of course, they do the Kentucky Dark Fire, which is the big one. And then yeah, I think they even might do Louisiana because of, you know, with the Louisiana Perique. Wait, you say Kentucky Dark Fire. Is that different than the other fire cured KFC thing? That is the KFC. Oh, that is. Okay. That's the Kentucky Dark Fire. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's some tobacco right there. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Real yeah. smoky. Yep. I don't know if I like it, though. I don't know if it's for me, personally. But I, I thought it was interesting. A lot of the pipe tobacco I have utilizes it. Okay. And it's a strong leaf. Um, it's robust. It's good. I, I like it. Um, it's funny. For me, I don't smoke that many of the KFCs. You know, um, because I guess I like the pipe tobacco version a little bit more. Okay. But, yeah, it's... I, I, I'm a big fan of that uh, Starfire in Kentucky. I've enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it in the past. I haven't smoked one in a while, though. Oh, what's Tony got there? They oh. use tobacco brokers. Yeah, I think you're right, because like, there is a company in Lancaster called Lancaster Leaf. And um, But I've always been curious. Like you know, are you, I think at Lancaster Leaf, you can go to them, I believe, and it's just completely... Speculation, but I believe you can go to them, and I think they warehouse leave from all over the world. Because I think maybe that's how people like in Miami and other parts of America get their, their leaf from. Mm -hmm. And I also believe they are brokering leaf to the factories in Nicaragua. Okay. I think I'm, I'm still. I've been. I've, I've. I've been wanting to like maybe just drive over there one day and like try to find a broker and be like, "Hey, man, can you talk to me about this?" And, Oh, did you see what George put up there? Yes, that's me. An age cigar for me is two months. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. See, that's the smart way to go, I think. I do think that's the smart right. way. Right. But, you know, it, it is nice when you go to a cigar shop, you find a cigar that you want, and you, you pull that cigar out of that cell thing, and I hope this has been sitting for a little while. Well, you know, it's like, yellow. yeah, it's, it's pre-aged. <laughs> At the regular price. Right, exactly. Ah, oh, score. <laughs> I'll tell you, that is actually one thing, you know, you, Ra Raul down the back of the week does have a lot of stuff. He that, does, that he does. That is like that. And there are some real, real gems. Oh, speaking of which, he's got this cigar. Oh, God, I wish I could remember the name of it. It's a Fuente cigar. Did you see it? Oh, yeah, the Opus, uh, the Opus, like, Dubai. Green or something? Is it green? Yeah, it has a green and red, but it's it's an opus that was only available in, in Dubai. Dubai. And he got a couple boxes. and He got more than a couple boxes. Okay. Well, when I went there, the post had just popped up, right? And all of his Fuente heads were, like, running in there. And he's, like, you know, it's kind of like. Oh, people were buying it. Oh, yeah. And I'm, like, I'm in there. I'm, like, this kind of feels like, like a back room kind of, like, like deal. It's kind of, like. You know, what did I just walk in on? And it's like, like, oh, it's the Opus to buy. Yeah. Did you see the box? Yes. Man, it's beautiful. It's like it is. it's green, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. It's this green lacquer box that when you open it, it's it's beautiful. I mean, it's got the Opus X like inlaid logo onto the top of the box, heavy lacquer, so it's like piano finish. And then you open it, and it's got this graphics. And, and so let's say the box is like this big, right? Well, let's say this is the dimension, the, the general dimension box. Well, the cigars only take up about that much. Mm -hmm. And they're beautifully laid out with a beautiful band, like really fancy, like, you know, typical fancy Opus X band, but in green, with green trim. And then it's got, like, the whole, like, graphics and, say, paper and really nice paper and, like, printing. And, mm -hmm. and, then, and then the whole thing comes in, like, a cloth like bag. Yeah. I mean, it's really something. It is. But here at Tobacco, it's $115. For one stick, Oof. so it's like, but but I'm, and from what they told me, they bought multiple boxes of this, and brought them in. Yeah, and I'm, I guess what you're saying, they're selling, they're they're selling. selling out. He's got the selling out of them. He's the Fuente heads will buy. It. Yeah, yeah. You know the guys that are that that buy those the Opus was the Opus Six. 
I'm, I'm not well versed in really, they, go, they're the, they hunt that rare opus cigar. Mm. And, you know, and that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let me, you know, hundred for for a cigar, one hundred fifteen dollars is a lot of money, no doubt. Right. But if you, I guess, if you put in perspective, it's a Dubai exclusive cigar. Yep. It's cheaper than going to Dubai. Oh hell yeah! That, so, that was the sales pitch. Like, <laughs> I just you know, saved you a thousand dollars in airfare. But I just wonder, <laughs> like, I wonder who sells it there. Like, what shops? The only shop that I've been to in in Dubai is the La Casa de Lobano on Jumeirah on Jumeir Beach. It's right on. It's right in front of the uh, the Ritz Carlton, and um, great, great, beautiful, beautiful store, amazing selection. But that's the only cigar shop that I've been to. So I just wonder, like, who's selling it there? Right. Actually, Raul was like, "Hey, man, next time you say when you go back to Dubai, <laughs> I'm gonna have you get some more. Oh, fine, I'll, <laughs> I'll go pick up some for you. You give me the money, I'll pick up some for you." Tourist the bull and purple rain. Yep. Is, yeah. Is Taurus the bull? Is that a? Is that that's not funny. LFD. LFD. Okay. Yeah. I think it's LFD. purple. What was purple rain? Released? Purple rain is a really. Rare, it's another one of those really rare opus. Is that like a country exclusive? No, no. It's just a really rare opus. And you're, yeah, Tony, I, I saw them. They were, I think, eighty or hundred bucks pop. I wonder if um that's the brother has that. that. Huh? You know, Fuente's brother or Arturo Fuente Jr. Yeah. Has that shop called uh, uh, Havana Tampa Sweethearts? Tamp is it Havana or Tampa Sweethearts? Yeah, Tampa Sweethearts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in in yeah. Ybor City. Yeah, I wonder if he had those. He had. I mean, I, I went there looking to see if they had some that's the rare opus, and they do have some. Of them. Okay. Um, but you know, as I don't know how much they have. To, let's be honest. You know, they sell it out to their their you know people the shops. Sure, sure, sure. Tony is my man when it comes to aged cigars of a humidor. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, the Taurus the Bull is also an opus. Is it also an opus? That's what Tony said. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it, it might be. I, I don't know. That might be one of those rare sizes. I'm, I'm, I'm probably mixing up with the Illusion. Oh, and the Illusion. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's another one of those cigars that I looked at it. I know it's got a lot of hype behind it. You know, it's twenty bucks plus for for the cigar. And that one, I look at it, and it's the size that kills it. Too big to me. I look at the size and I'm like, ah, I don't really need that. Mm. You know, and that's the only reason why I really I haven't smoked one. I smoked one, so I went to an event, an LT event with Lito Gomez. I think it was at Tobacco Leaf several years ago, and they had the Andalusian Bulls available. Mm -hmm. So I did smoke one of those. And it's quite it's quite a powerful cigar. I mean, not, not to me, it wasn't as powerful as some people have said. Like, it's like heavy, maybe mm -hmm. too much for them. But it wasn't, I didn't, I don't recall it being that powerful, but it was, it was very strong, very strong. It's unassuming, too, because, well, I shouldn't say it's unassuming, but it's a great cigar that goes against that myth of, Strong cigar, dark cigar. I mean, that, that's what care. A lot of people get caught up by that. You know, oh, that looks too rich for me. I mean, like the color. Yeah, yeah. I mean, take that PDR that you smoked a few here, like last month. Mm -hmm. That's not a strong cigar. No, no, no. But I mean, it's that dark and dirt. But I think that's one of the misnomers, right? That, that, and I'm not sure exactly how it really developed here. I mean, that's something we've. Historically, have always thought that Maduro means stronger, but mm -hmm. really, Maduro is a is a term in Latin and Spanish that just means mature. Yeah, you know. So really, Maduro is just age. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's strong. Like if you in Spanish, you would say that something has más fuerte, that would be very strong. Right. Um, but Maduro just means. I mean, like for example, you, you'll get things like. Bananas that are called maduros, and they're basically just brown. Right. You know, so I, I'm not sure exactly how in cigars we got to that point. So Tony says, My boss went on a shopping spree for a dude who wanted rare opus, and since he gave us his Amex black card, we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, yeah. when someone gives you an Amex black card, then 
certainly you should be able to do whatever you like with it. For I know. And you know, the funny thing, I when I was waiting tables, when I was in my 20s, you know, I got a couple of those open sex black cards, or no, the American yes. Express black cards. Uh -huh. And like, you first time you get it, like, oh, it's a black card. You know, like, oh, that, graphite, yeah. that graphite is yeah. something else. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, and then uh, then the person leaves the tip for you and it's like, oh, really, dude, you got a black card. <laughs> like, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, my friend had a black card. The black yeah. Card. That's the, when the first time he had one for a while. And, you know, I think it, I think the annual fee is two thousand five hundred dollars. Oh yeah, and it was five thousand. It was it was an extreme amount. Yeah. So you know, if you're spending, let's say five thousand dollars for your fees, you don't have any more money left to like give a tip. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're card poor. You ain't house poor. You ain't car poor. You're card poor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. oh, that's how you found the purple rain of the tourist book. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. 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 Yep. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. That was, that was a solid cigar. I'll tell you. That, that was, was that was very, very good. That was well worth well worth it. If you see them in the wild, it, it I for my palate, it wouldn't it doesn't disappoint. I see it in the wild, I'm picking one up. Yeah, I agree with that. Especially at the price point. Definitely yes. a great price point. But let's see. What, so just to let you know, in the coming weeks, I think next week Raul said he's gonna come join us here on the show. So Raul will be here next week. And then we're going to be smoking the Fonseca, the new Fonseca that's being made by um, Pepin Garcia, my father's yeah. cigar. So evidently he has taken over the Fonseca name. Okay. I guess it must have gone foul at some point and then... I don't know. I, I never really smoked the Fonseca when it was when it was out before. It was a little bit before my time. So I, 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 I couldn't say how it relates to the old Fonseca. Yeah, I mean, the old Fonseca is from what I recall were relatively mild cigars. And the, I, actually, I still have a box of two twos, fun sake. These are real small, like, I don't even know what they're called, but they're really, really small. And um, I remember them being fairly light, um, well-regarded. So I'm interested to see what Tepian's doing with the name for this new iteration. Um, let's see, so, Tony says the order for cigars says we're like five thousand. Oh my god, five thousand dollars in cigars. <laughs> yep. And then after that, the week after that is going to be the Crown Head Mil Diaz at Mundo, and then the a week after the following week, the EP Carrillo Pledge, Pledge uh, Sojourn, and then towards the towards the end of the the next cycle is going to be the Herrera Esteli Miami. Okay. So yeah. That's really a lot of those actually are, are kind of new releases. I mean, the Fonseca just came out. Right. Uh, the Crown Heads, uh, was it? Uh, Mil Diaz. Mil Diaz. 1,000 Days. Yeah, yeah. That one, um, that's a brand new release for them. I, I know, it, I think it took them like three years, or two two or three years to really develop that. Plan. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, it took them a, it took them a while. Um, so that one's brand spanking new. Um, I think the other one might be New as well. I know they just came out with something else. The Korea. Yeah, they, they just came out with something else this time. So, yeah, those are all stuff that's that's just coming to market. Well, you know, it's interesting. The, the, the EP Korea is, it, it is one kind of correlates to what we talked about earlier with the, the cigar boom, right? Like, so during the cigar boom, of course, um, Ernesto Perez Korea was making the La Mora Cubana down in um, Miami. And during the boom, they were one of the companies that were rushing into production. And I remember we would get these uh, LGC Wavels that, and at the time, in the 90s, in the mid-90s, the LGC Wavel was like, highly regarded, like well sought after. And then the boom hit, and then they were like impossible to find. And when you could find them, the price skyrocketed, right? Like, like I mean, this is a, the weird thing with pricing. Like, so for example, the... I have a bundle of that, of a 1997 release of the, the Wavelles in a bundle, paper wrap bundle. Mm -hmm. And I still have a price tag on it. For the 20 sticks that are in this bundle, they were $113. And I remember <laughs> I paid this and I was like, this is an astronomical, ridiculous price, but I have to have them. And here's the sucker thing. 
I bought it. I never opened the, the bundle. It's, it's still so, sitting it's completely so, cool. so, but, but, you know, what I was thinking when we we're talking about the, the, the early releasing, the premature, the premature releasing, was that those were valves were so premature back then that it kind of put a damper on my enthusiasm for the brand. Okay. You know, so yeah. I haven't really smoked many LGCs since that time. And so it's interesting, it'll be interesting to see where Carrillo is today with right. this new release. Yeah. You know, and of course, it's a different era. So it's not, it wouldn't be fair to compare, but that is something that's kind of in the back of my mind. Like, oh, how, I wonder how it is. And yeah, two, two, was it two, three years ago, he got, uh, I think, uh, a cigar, what is it, uh, aficionado, gave him the number one cigar of the year. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, so, so yeah, it's something. I haven't dove into that line very much at all, so I can't speak to to it that much. But um, I, I know there's there's a lot of good good things that you mean the LGC, yeah. yeah. But I think the LGC was taken over by a larger company. Well, and I don't know if he's really involved with it anymore. Well, I don't I don't know the stuff he's putting out now. Okay, okay, okay. Is, has been has some good hype. So let's turn it down. Tony says, forget the Fonseca, smoke the Mildias. Yes, we'll get to that for sure. For sure. <laughs> that's in two weeks. The pledge has been getting great feedback for such a new cigar. Oh, that's good. That's good yeah. to hear. That's yeah. good to hear. That's yeah. in three weeks. So, again, if you're interested in these cigars, I'll, I'll put them in the show notes after this because I just made the schedule for it. And these are all cigars that I picked up this past weekend at Tobacco Leaf, so they are available right now. And unlike the, uh, the Stolen Thrones, they do have quite a bit of them, of all of the, the four that I've talked about. So, all right, so it's been two hours and 13 minutes now. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for joining us another Thursday. We'll be back again next week on Thursday with more cigars, more smoking, and all <laughs> more that. Coffee. More coffee. And uh, yeah, if you need coffee, let me know. And you can check out the spurcoffee.com and use Cigar Live and get 10% off whatever you want to buy. All right. So, cool. anything else? No, that's it. All right, excellent. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a good night. See you next week. Have a good one. Smash that.